Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou and today I'm going to be doing uh, a slightly different video. This is a bit more experimental for me. Uh, in December I've been keeping a vlog of my thoughts on the books that I've been reading as well as some of the kind of Christian faith topics that have come out of reading them. So things that have inspired me or challenged me um, throughout my reading time. Um, as well as I've thrown in a bit of just a bits of my life just for added colour into the mix. Um, let me know what you think of the format. I quite enjoyed uh, doing it that way because I'm just kind of thinking on my feet and um, giving you my thoughts as I'm reading, which is kind of easier to remember what, what I've been reading as I'm just talking as I'm reading. Uh, but it is kind of raw, it's unscripted and sometimes I'm filming without any makeup on uh, so it is kind of real life, welcome to my world kind of video. Uh, but let me know what you think, I'm going to wrap up all of the books I've read at the end of the video, just briefly. Uh, but here is my December reading log. I recorded a vlog for Tis the Seasonthon, that's the first week of December so I'll include that in the description below. Um, this this vlog carries on from then. So it is Friday the 13th of December and I have just completed The End of the Magi by Patrick W. Carr. Um, it's had such a good ending to this book. Um, I was probably on going to give it um, 4.5 stars up until 75% of the way through and the ending was just really really good and kind of unexpected but expected if you like. Um, I'm, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give away any spoilers to this um, but yeah really good really good ending. If you haven't seen a previous vlog I'll link that one below but um, it's following the journey of Myrad who is one of the magi and um, it's, it's like a kind of really dramatic road trip novel of the first century um, and just everything is going on and it really kind of taught me how dangerous the journey was for the Magi and traveling around in that time and really how why it took such a long time for them to get to um, Bethlehem and and this kind of this story follows a most of Myrad's life um, and going through a whole lot of stuff and yeah it's very dramatic um, if you're not a fan of uh, gory violence then you know skip through the first chapter after that it doesn't have so much queasiness um, yeah this is a really good book I'm not sure what I'm going to rate it but possibly five out of five also today uh, Another book came in the post. That uh, is uh, Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. I'm hoping that to read that one um, over Christmas time. And before that, I want to pick up again the printed letter bookshop by Catherine Ray which is the book that I was reading before I put it down for Tis the Seasonathon so I really like to finish that one before I pick up the next one. I was just about to start writing my review for this book and um, I was really thinking about the way that different ways that God speaks to us. I know in this book it talks about the Magi having a dream and God speaking to them through their dream and um, that's one of the ways that God's spoken to me um, in the past is through my dreams and dreams are such ordinary things aren't they I mean everybody dreams all every night you know unless you have a real bad sleep problem um, and not everybody remembers their dreams but you know quite often if I have a dream that's significant or, or just different from normal um, and I don't understand it, I'll, I'll take it to God in the morning and I'll, I'll pray through it and I'll, I'll ask him to interpret um, what's been going on and most of the time those dreams that are 
you know, dreams are coming out of my own subconscious. Um, but God can give um, revelation as to, you know, what's going on inside of you and in your emotions and things that you might be worried about or things that are coming up that, you know, you're stressed about. Um, but sometimes they are what I would call a God dream where um, that God's kind of dropped the thought into your brain as you're sleeping and the image into your brain and, and you having this dream and um, sometimes it can be really helpful for um, the future um, either kind of giving you hope uh, for the future such as you know when I've been through difficult times with my health I've had some dreams um, about coming out of that season and um, and sometimes there can be uh, dreams about warning you about something that's about to happen or, or about um, some opportunity that's about to come up that's actually not going to be good for you. Um, and so, yeah, really, it's really good to see um, the characters in this book getting dreams and thinking about the nativity and the Christmas time. And there's such a lot, there's, well, quite a few of the characters did have dreams God spoke to Joseph, um, the father, Mary's husband, and uh, the stepfather, I should say. And, you know, he, he, God spoke to him in a dream, and God spoke to the Magi in the dream, warning them not to go back to Herod. Um, and then, of course, the rest of the Gospels, Jesus is there, and so God didn't need to speak through dreams and things like that. But then, when after in Acts, when he's gone back up into heaven um, the Holy Spirit speaks to some of the people again through dreams and visions and things like that um, yeah I'm just I'm just thinking about the way different ways that God speaks to us you know God can drop um, a thought into your head that that seems like you know it wasn't there before and it wasn't something you would normally think of um, or he can you know drop a direction into your head like go go this way don't go this way um, and it helps you avoid something that was happening or or whatever. Um, God can stick a picture into your mind the way you suddenly just have a, a visual image in your mind and um, he can speak to you that way. He can speak to you through the Bible by, by when you're reading it through and, and something kind of jumps out at you and you're thinking, wow, I didn't read it like that before. Um, he can speak to you through friends or he can speak to you through the pastor giving a sermon you know, so many different ways that he can speak, you know, through, through nature, through sunsets, through all sorts of things. And the Holy Spirit is wanting to speak to us all the time, just through ordinary things like dreams, like things we pass on the road, like thoughts that come into our heads. And just being open to hearing the, the voice of God, you know, since I've started having more, um, God speaking to me more through my dreams, I've kept a notebook by the side of my bed so that if I have a dream in the night then I'll write it down and then in my devotional time my quiet time in the mornings I can take it to God and pray through it and say you know is there an interpretation is are you trying to say something through this and um, that just um, that opens up the door for God to speak to us you know and what I also love about this book is that when they had those dreams they took them back to the prophecies that Daniel had had um, they took them back to the scriptures that they kept um, in uh, in the synagogues, and um, they compared them with that. And they said, "Well, what is what does the Bible say, as it were? What does the scripture say?" And I think that's really important when we hear the voice of God, when we feel like we're hearing um, something from the Holy Spirit. We take it back to the Bible. We take it back to Scripture and say, "What what is the Bible saying?" Because you know if say you had a dream where somebody told you to go and have an adulterous affair with your next door neighbor you know that's not going to be god um because in the bible it's you know it clearly says do not commit adultery so god is not going to contradict himself so you know we really need to have both the holy spirit and the word of god you know word of god through the holy spirit word of god through the scriptures and the bible and we need those things together really to hear what god is saying to us um, so yeah, I'm just, yeah, that's some thoughts that have come out of reading that book. Um, just being open to hearing God speaking through the ordinary every day. 
in a supernatural way. It's the 17th of December and I've been out to a Christmas party. The river was really high and uh, the sunset was really beautiful on my way home. So I thought I'd show you that. So I'm currently reading the Printed Letter Bookshop by Catherine Ray and this book is um, following three women who are connected by this one bookshop. Um, the bookshop was originally owned by um, the main character Madeline, her aunt Maddie. We start off the book with uh, her aunt Maddie's funeral and um, we, we follow these three women, Maddie, Madeline, who um, inherits the bookshop from her aunt and uh, <coughs> Janet who Janet and Claire who work at the bookstore. This is really um, a character driven book I think. Um, it starts off in Christmassy time so that's appropriate for now. Um, I think it's going to go through more of the year as it goes on. At the moment I'm curious to see uh, what the backstory was for um, the, some of these characters because you kind of get hints at things like um, Madeline's aunt Maddie and her brother didn't seem to be on speaking terms very much and I don't know why that is yet and also um, Janet ha has divorced from her husband and she seems to feel guilty about something but I don't know why that is either um, so hopefully I'm hoping this is going to be a, a happy ending to this book where um, some of these things get resolved and we, we find out kind of what's been going on in the past and, and see them developing in their friendships together and possibly some romance I hope at some point. Um, it doesn't seem to have a huge faith element to it yet but maybe that will come out a bit later in the book. So I am about halfway, just over halfway through at the moment. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Hey, it's uh, super dark and pouring with rain outside. So I have my really bright indoor lights on at the moment so you can see me. And it is the 19th of December. I had some Christmas posts today. So uh, this is my first ever Christmas card in Welsh. Um, I think it, I'm gonna try and pronounce it. Nadolig Glawen Lawen Sorry to any Welsh speakers who are watching Lawen Glawen Maybe you can correct me um, And also Book in the post today uh, I saw this book on Nay's channel Daughter of Increase And this is a, a Non-fiction obviously uh, book She Prays, which is 31 day journey to confident conversations with God. And I think it's every day there's like um, a, a passage to read, a verse to focus on, I think, and then some kind of space, although I think I'll probably use a notebook, but space to kind of journal or pray, prayer journal things through. So I thought that would be a good way to start in January, 31 days in January of investing in my prayer time. So I've got that one. Um, I finished the printed letter bookshop, which was really, really good. Um, it's a story about friendship predominantly, three women's friendship or three women's relationships that they get together over this bookshop as I've already said before um, it's written in two two of the two of the characters are written in first person and the third one is written in third person which becomes clear a bit later on um, and yeah it's really it's really good it's got really good friendships uh, there is some romance there is some faith stuff a bit later in the book and um, I really enjoyed it so I think I'm probably going to give it 4.75 out of 5 and, and then on good Goodreads I'll bump it up to 5, round it up to 5. So yeah, that's good. And the next book I will be starting is Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. 
and um, Ashina on her channel was talking about this one a lot and I think quite a few of us have picked it up because of her so I'm hoping I'm really gonna like it it's a contemporary Christ Christmas Christian fiction um, following Sydney who is a lawyer who um, is trying to keep her job and is really busy and when her grandmother gets ill she arranges for a cab driver to get her to the clinic or the hospital and then um, it also follows the cab driver Finn who doesn't really want to be left with this um, old lady with dementia uh, but somehow gets kind of caught up into her world and her and the grandmother is then trying to get him to help um, Sydney find a date so it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun uh, Oshina really liked it so I am hopeful that I'm really going to like this one have this one building up to Christmas and I'll let you know how I get on Hi, so it is December 27th and I took a break from filming over Christmas for obvious reasons, um, but I managed to finish uh, Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock on Christmas Eve. Um, I didn't think I was going to finish it because I, it got quite sad in one part and I thought, oh, I don't really want to read this one on Christmas, uh, but I did end up reading up Christmas Eve. I think I'll give it um, four out of five stars. The characters are kind of quite snarky characters. Um, there's some comedy there's also sadness um so there's a whole mixture of stuff in there and it was fairly good read to read over christmas um so yeah that was that one and now i'm thinking i'm picking up the merchant's daughter by melanie dickson which is the second book i think in the hagenheim series and i've read the first one and whatever book was warrior maiden um, I think the last book in the series is coming out later next year, which is the 11th book. So um, I'm a bit out of sequence, but this one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling um, set in medieval England. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. Also on Christmas Eve, I got this in the post, which is a one year the Bible in One Year, the One Year Bible Illustrated Version. So this is a paperback, um, second-hand copy. It's got kind of colour coding for the different months on the side and then every kind of... every day's post has got like an illustrated heading to it. So it goes through, gives you um, a portion to read from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and Psalms and Proverbs. Um, so I'll be dipping in and out of that one. I've done the Bible in the year before, so I don't feel like um, I need to be too religious about getting it all done. But my pastor mentioned that we might be um, doing a Bible in the year on um, an app. And since I'm trying to keep my screen time down in the evenings particularly, I decided I'd get a, a used copy of the paperback. And anyway, I like reading paperbacks more at the moment than I do ebooks. Um, and this one's with the coloured illustrations. I wasn't sure if it's going to be coloured or um, or black and white, but it is coloured. Um, so that one, I think, is going to be good for the new year. So um, what else? Oh, I had a tag. Um, from Stephanie at Quilting Beauty and Books. She tagged me in her um, Christmas Eve book tag. Uh, I think I missed the boat for that one really as it's kind of gone past Christmas but I'll put it on my list for next year's Christmas Eve videos and um, I'll link her video down in the description. Um, she's a really good channel to watch. Um, she talks about Christian fiction as well as quilting and her other 
all her other talents um, and she's lovely to watch so I definitely recommend you go over and check her out all right I'll catch up later it's December 30th and I am just over halfway through The Merchant's Daughter um, this story follows Annabelle who uh, her father was a wealthy merchant but he um, lost everything when his ship sunk and a few years, few years later I think he died so then they were left alone and the mother and her brothers were too proud to do their kind of share of work in the fields with the other villagers and they didn't have the money to pay the fine so um, that went to court and Annabelle ended up as a servant, um, an indentured servant to the new lord of the manor. Um, the lord has got kind of a troubled past. He um, He's quite a beastly character. He's, he's got kind of bad temper and is quite gruff and uh, doesn't like women for various reasons that um, you find out through the, his past. Um, so they're kind of thrown together in this manner where he's kind of building a new castle. So that's the kind of setup for the story. It's got quite dramatic in the middle. Um, it's a teen fiction. So it's not, you know, it's not overly complicated story, but it's quite fun so far. Um, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm liking the characters and um, I like the medieval uh, setting of the historical fiction. Something that I was thinking of while I was reading this book is Annabelle really wants to be able to read um, a copy of the Bible for herself. And just thinking about how difficult it would have been for our ancestors to um, read the Bible and you know they haven't they didn't have a copy for themselves obviously um, it was very expensive and a lot of a lot of women you know couldn't read at all um, and so they're really reliant on their priests to uh, to tell them what was in the Bible and, and, and you kind of hope that they know what they're talking about um, so I, I just thought I really don't want to take for granted my ability to read the Bible in English and just my ability to read at all, you know, I, just, I want to make the most of it and be really thankful for that. So it is New Year's Eve and I have finished The Merchant's Daughter. I uh, really enjoyed the ending, kind of good to see how it fits in with like the Disney ending. Um, there are some similarities, some differences, uh, really good ending to the romance and um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna rating I'm gonna give it yet so I'll wait till the morning to do that but I will sum all this up um, in the beginning of January before I put out this video so thanks for joining me and I'll see you again. So that was my December reading and faith vlog uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the format uh, I think I'm gonna continue doing that in January. Uh, it seems like a good way for me to get my thoughts out about the books um, in a way that's not quite so formal as the book reviews. I'm going to continue doing individual um, short book reviews uh, so you can kind of pick a, an individual book if you want to know what my thoughts are on that particular book. So these are the books that I read in December. Christmas in Winter Hill by Melody Carlson which I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like a Winter Snow by Lindsay Harrell, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars. The End of the Magi by Patrick W. Carr, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars. The Printed Letter Bookshop by Catherine Ray, which I gave 4.75 out of 5 stars. Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock, I gave 4 out, four out of 5 stars. And The Merchant's Daughter by Mel... Melanie Dickerson which I gave 4.75 out of 5 stars. So I had a pretty good reading month. Um, surprising really because December's super busy but I stopped trying to um, write so much uh, in after November and so that's kind of freed up my brain to read more stories. Um, some of those were quite short as well. Let me know in the comments what you've been reading this month and um, also you know if you have any reading plans for 2020 or for January, let me know what you want to read next. I wish you a happy new year and until next time, bye.